I'm Amber Anderson. Hello, I'm Harry Curtin. Hi, I'm Sophie Rundle, and I'm chatting all things Peaky Blinders with Cosmo UK. Look, Tom. This one of us isn't going to be here for long. Killian was um, really lovely to meet because he was just really normal. And the first time I met him on my first day, and it was a scene with quite a lot of us in the room, and he was just very quietly standing at the side of the room, kind of watching everybody and um, he spends a lot of time with the crew because obviously he's been working with a lot of the crew for years and so it just struck me how down to earth and kind of kind he was and I think the way a leading man is or a leading actor really trickles down into the rest of the set in terms of how they are and I think because Killian's very normal and down to earth it meant that the whole set felt quite normal and down to earth and it didn't feel like there was a competition in any way in terms of people's egos flying around it just felt like a group of friends and so that was really nice this one of us isn't going to be here for long i think but at this point i'm very happy to do what steve puts on the page because he's so brilliant and it's it you know often you collaborate with people or often you sort of you say no I don't think it would be like that what about this but with Peaky's it's so brilliant and he's Steve is such a master of this world that he's created that yeah I'm I'm always very happy with with what he gives us I think you just come onto the floor and you just say you see what's around you and you go well, maybe I can do it like this maybe I can sit here and, and adding stuff is always great but you never really need to with what what Steve gives you he's he gives you such gifts every scene that you're in yeah yes and no I think again because of growing up on it I've n I, like I didn't want to push my mark I didn't want to necessarily you know, just overstep the boundaries especially with Stephen being so so amazing with the writing and him really being able to build the character anyway but um I, I especially you know respect to every director that I've worked with um I think I especially sort of um, bonded or, or just resonated with Anthony, who obviously has directed this one and season five, because I was, I think I was, I was ready. I have a natural scar here. I'm, I probably won't show up on video, but we like extended the natural scar down onto my chin. And then obviously I got, uh, Finn got shot in season five and stuff. So we added a few more scars. man is yeah it was really really hard I mean it was a, it was obviously not the ideal <laughs> timings because my son was four weeks old when I went back so I did all my stuff bunched together right at the end of the shoot which was very strange because I turned up and everybody had been <laughs> slugging their guts out for months on end and I sort of turned up not fresh faced because I just had a baby but um I turned up and did everything kind of pushed all together so it was a really strange really intense way of doing it but it felt kind of mad and quite fitting to say goodbye to it. We filmed in a lot of old houses around sort of Cheshire and Manchester so we stayed in, in Manchester in hotels and apartments and then we we were never more than like an hour's drive away but we did explore a lot of the local countryside around Manchester and so also because of Covid we had to keep all the doors open for ventilation um, and so you're not only in these cold houses in on cold days because we were filming in January and February um, they also left all the doors open so there wasn't any heating anyway so I remember on my first day my first day was the one scene I didn't want to start with you know you always have that one scene in the script where you're like I really hope I don't have to start with that scene and then I got the schedule through and I was like of course I'm starting with that scene and it was without giving anything away it was a, quite a long monologue of just me speaking to a room of people. And so I kind of had first day nerves anyway, combined with the cold, <laughs> the fact that all the doors had been left open, combined with like all of these layers of clothing that I wasn't used to and I was still getting used to, combined with having to do fake smoking, uh, which is something that is really weird because there's no tobacco in the fake cigarettes, but you're still like smoking something. And so weirdly you do get like a bit of a strange head rush and I just remember doing this scene like trying to look like really cool and graceful and like I was from the 1930s like trying to smoke and my hand just kind of 
trembling as I was bringing my hand up to my mouth and just thinking, oh my God. Um, but I, I hope I pulled it off. I think I did. I think I got away with it. <sighs> Father Christmas got stuck up the chimney again, did he? Mm. Oh, yeah. What should you on tomorrow? I think the cigarettes, I think they just call them herbal cigarettes. There's definitely some kind of leaf in them, but it's, I think it's like herbs. It's not tobacco. So you don't get a head rush as such. There's no like nicotine. There's no chemical that would make you feel like you'd had a stimulant, but obviously you're still inhaling smoke. And even if you're someone who has smoked, like I haven't smoked for years, but I used to, it was still a bit of a strange shock for my body because obviously you usually light a cigarette at the beginning of every take because your character might be lighting a cigarette at the beginning of the conversation that they're having but you do maybe 10 takes for each setup and you might do seven camera setups per scene and so you end up smoking like 70 cigarettes in a day and obviously they're not real cigarettes but i like i did end up with a couple of headaches from these cigarettes because <laughs> i just wasn't used to it at all oh the best most expensive one then we'll get there and Tommy will say, hello, Lizzie. Hello. No. <laughs> nah, I, I do. There's a few There's a few little things over the years that I've uh, accidentally gone home with. Um, but in terms of that, that's physically just like the world of Peaky Blinders. But me as a person, I don't know. Yeah, it's taught me a lot. I think acting just teaches me a lot anyway. It's, it's, it's why I love it and will continue to do it. Uh, when when things are truly over, I think maybe I, I might get... Um, possibly politely gifted maybe a jacket or or a, a piece of jewelry that I was quite fond of uh, but I have no say in you know the powers that be are very strong on Peaky Blinders. I keep trying to steal stuff every year and I never get away with it which is like the least the least Shelby thing in the world um I think Ada definitely would have managed to nick a lot of stuff by now but like they, there's so much incredible stuff like they made this series they made this leather coat for me I was talking about this earlier and it had these fur collar and these fur cuffs and it was so beautiful and they made it for me and I was like surely I can take this but they weren't having it apparently it was way too expensive and it's gone off to be used <laughs> somewhere else I think so I don't think I managed to nick anything I think I managed to nick a broken bracelet but it was broken so I think it's fine I open the door. Why? were very helpful in the sense that they pulled our bodies in a lot and made us really stand up straight but at the same time that doesn't come naturally to me and so I ended up with a lot of headaches and a lot of sore backs because I was constantly having to keep my back really upright and hold myself like I was my grandmother and it's just a lot of layers because it's like you have your underwear and then you have like a petticoat and then you might even have like a skirt to give your dress a particular shape and then you have the dress itself and obviously if we were filming during the night or on a cold day they would obviously give you thermals to wear as well and so there was one day on set where I counted that I had seven layers on because I was wearing like the control my underwear the control underwear a petticoat um, an underskirt thermals and then the dress and also they gave they give you these sound pants so that you can clip your like mic pack into the back of these pants and so you just have like a ridiculous amount of clothes on. It's like Joey and Friends when he, is it the Thanksgiving episode in Friends when Joey has all the layers of clothes on? Like that, I felt like that was me filming Peaky Blinders at one point. You have a very powerful enemy. I wanted to survive. I think we might just be actors. I think we're just all in our own world. Um, and if we enjoy ourselves, like, I mean, this season, uh, me, Daryl and Comrade sort of uh, shared a few cigars and some whiskeys in a, a quite a peaky, peaky fashion. So I think we, we, we definitely like to unwind and just chill out. But I think everybody there is, uh, you do stay in it quite a bit. I think because the scenes are so serious, it actually creates more space for like banter because you can't help but come out of that. You know, you can't be serious all the time, otherwise you'd just be exhausted. And so you would have these very serious scenes that would then be interrupted by like someone's cigarette lighter not working or something that happened to me, which was that one of the other actors almost set my wig on fire with a cigarette. And so you have these really funny accidental moments that kind of interrupt the scene that 
mean that you have to laugh and you have to find it funny and and I think that's quite nice because it also means that you sort of get over yourself and you get over the nerves and you get over the seriousness of it all. There was a very funny moment in a scene between Sophie and I, uh, between my character and Ada, where I had to pour us glasses of whiskey and it became obvious that I'd never poured a glass of whiskey before because I poured like a whole tumbler full of whiskey and everyone was laughing at me because they basically, if you were actually going to drink that much whiskey, you'd probably die. Uh, so yeah, there were some funny moments like that as well. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's de never feels very serious at <laughs> work because it's so ridiculous and it's so much fun. So someone's always doing something silly or something mental, um, which is fun actually, because you have all these, you know, especially on the days when everybody's in and everyone's being very cool and, you know, being a peaky and then they say cut and then you you've got everybody dressed as these characters that you know as being really intimidating and actually everyone's just chatting about lunch or you know someone's someone's break broken something over there and someone's costumes fallen apart there you know so it's that but that's the joy of doing any tv show you know that's what i always hold on to when i watch a scary film i'm always terrified and then i think you know they just someone said cut and then they all went off and had a biscuit and a cup of tea and everything was fine and peaky's is no different I would say that Tasha O'Keefe, Tashi O'Keefe, who plays Lizzie, is a pretty big joker. She had a real um, affection for those tiny hands, you know, like the tiny hands that you can put inside your sleeves. And so uh, I, I had heard stories already of those being, of those turning up in scenes in unexpected places. Um, Sam Claflin, who plays Mosley, is, is hilarious and always fun to have around. And you would always just hear him in another room like singing a song or something. He's just got a very, very good way of keeping himself occupied on set during the boring moments. Paul Anderson is such a troublemaker. I mean, you probably can guess just by watching Arthur on screen. Yeah, he's always doing something mischievous, something that he shouldn't be. Um, and Packy Lee, who plays Johnny Dogs, is one of the funniest, silliest men I've ever met. So, any time Packy Lee was in, it was always going to be fun. He always just makes it a bit of a party. So I can't think of anything sort of specific, but it's just been 10 years of mild chaos. His brother, Thomas Shelby, says don't serve him opium ever again, or someone will write Arthur Shelby's name on your chest with a bayonet. My favourite part and least favourite part are probably the same thing, which is that she's so cool and she's so iconic and outrageous. Um, but that can be quite intimidating to <laughs> to do it. Like when you get the scripts and she says something brilliant, she's doing something really cool and you think, oh, that's amazing. And then you think, I have to do that. Um, and her energy is totally different to mine. I'm quite sort of up here and chatty and she's just really cool, knows what she's doing. So that can be quite a challenge when someone gives you a gun and gives you a great line and they say, you know, make that look cool and you think, I don't know what I'm doing here, but it's that's the joy of Peaky's. It's sort of it's big and bold and iconic and outrageous, and you just have to muddle your way through. <laughs> the body's so a lot of people say something that makes sense, and then I get a lot of people saying maybe she's playing Gina's mother, and I'm like, how dare you? I'm only like three years older than Anya. Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> How dare you? I'm only like 30. Although I, what I have had is I've had some people messaging me on Instagram like pitches for storylines, which I think is hilarious because I obviously don't have any say over the storylines or what goes into the script. That's all Stephen Knight. Um, and so it's quite funny because I get people messaging me being like, I've got an idea for the film. I think that Tommy should do this. And then like his daughter arrives and then this happens. And please let me know if you could pass that on to production and get me into Peaky Blinders. And I'm just like, I'm so sorry. That's just, it's not how it works. And if I had any say over the storyline, I, I would tell you, but I really don't. <laughs> I don't know about fan theories, but I love seeing all the, the art that people make. And, the, and I mean that in a, in a really broad sense, because it's not just pictures that people are drawing. People generate content off the back of Peaky's, and that's an amazing thing. You know, I think people, people are really inspired by it because it's so brilliant and it's so wild. And, it's, and so I love seeing what people have come up with. And, and even the people that, you know, are involved in the show, you know, brilliant artists in their own right, music or other actors, and they come and they get involved in this world. That's such a 
pleasure that's such a rare thing to be a part of so it's it's so much fun when you see anything sort of Peaky Blinders inspired and you think oh wow that's what that's how someone saw it and that's what they did with it. I haven't, I haven't had any, it's always been there in the background somewhere mentioning, even when I've seen Stephen at the premieres and like at different points, and it's always been mentioned, like, or suggested, should we say. But I just think I, it's served me so well and taught me so much. And I, I was very much, um, I don't even want to use this word, but I was very much in love with the whole thing. And it's not that I've fallen out of love with it, it's just, when a good relationship comes to an end, let it come to an end. No one knows what's happening. Uh, I think it's just at an ideas stage. That's the only thing I've heard. And as far as I know, no one knows who's in it or what's what it is or what's happening other than obviously Killian. Um, so yeah, I don't have any information about the film, I'm afraid. But you could tell on set that everyone was slight, all the actors were slightly looking through the script going like, do I die? Oh, okay, I don't die. That's interesting. Hmm, we'll see. But um, yeah, other than that, it's other than speculation, no one knows anything and I'm afraid I'm the same. Thanks for watching. Catch Peaky Blinders season six on BBC One.